G'day. This wheelchair, has, this wheelchair reclines and has elevating leg rests. So it means that I can lie down to go to shopping, to go to meetings. And when people see me in the chair, they say, gee, that looks comfortable, and it is. Now, before I got sick, I used to walk 20 to 40 minutes a day. Only being me, I found walking uphill too slow. So I used to jog. This is Queen Bean Hospital Hill. I used to jog up here singing. When I got sick, the school administration bought me specially made reclining chairs. This is my teaching chair, and I put my feet up under another chair under the desk. So I could keep on teaching, but what about the rest of my life? For the first year that I was sick, I spent hours, weekends, looking up at this, the wall of my bedroom. I would come home from school and just go straight to bed and lie there, getting used to not having a life anymore. See the grasshopper? He has my view of distance. When you can't walk further than the end of the street, you tend to get housebound. When I... Throughout the ups and downs of this illness, one thing has remained constant. When I do even simple things like standing up for too long, I run out, the tide of energy just goes out for me and I am left stranded. Without the chair, I end up slumped on the floor, treated like a darrow like by security guards which actually isn't funny when you can't get up and walk away. iPads run out of energy, and so do people with some illness. When I get low on energy, I stagger when I walk, or I do the 80-year-old shuffle. Going shopping becomes a nightmare. My daughter said that for her, the most horrifying thing was seeing the automatic doors close on me because I walk so slowly without the wheelchair. But with the wheelchair, when I am weak and tired beyond dreaming, I can lie right down. And the elevated leg rests help with the blood flow. First place I went to when I got this chair was the National Gallery of Australia to see Blue Poles. This painting has been like an intimate friend to me for years. Needless to say, I cried when I saw it because it reflects back my mental and physical state. But I say cried just to be able to see it again. This is another place I used to jog around, Queen Bee and um, Town Park. Now at least with a chair I can go out and watch my husband play cricket. In the chair I get a different view of the world. I looking up all the time and I see the rotting awning of the pub downtown. I see the high up windows in the shopping centres and I see the trees. I love looking up at the sunlight in the trees. In the ACT, oh, one of the main emotions with this illness is sheer and utter frustration at not being able to do things. And retail hair therapy really helps. It's really nice to get out and choose your own things. In the ACT, we have moderation meetings. Think teachers talk fest about subjects and assignments. When I got sick, I was too embarrassed to go to these meetings because I couldn't sit in a chair properly. But they're compulsory, so I had to go. About one in a hundred Australians have an illness like mine that just bulldozes your life flat. I'm wondering, where are they tonight? Are they stuck in bed, looking at a wall, filled with grief and anger, as well as all the usual misery of, uh, that an illness brings? I'm trying to sell you an idea, but this is what makes the idea possible. I couldn't go shopping, so I looked on eBay. It cost $70 for delivery, and that they brought it right to my door and it changed my life. I drive an automatic car with cruise control to get to work and to the doctor. The wheelchair is light and it folds up and goes in the boot. I just usually wait for somebody to help me with it. 
collect it so that I can get it into the car. Now, this is me looking at you and saying, okay, the wheelchair is not for everyone, but do you know someone who might get more out of life if they could do more of it lying down? Thank you. <laughs>